Welcome back to getting started with Unreal Technology. In this video, we are going to set up the lighting for this level that we've put together. The real lighting. At this point, all Zach has in place in regards to the lighting are static meshes. Right. And I've got these work lights in place, which you know allow us to see. If we turn these off, of course, everything would be black. But these don't really represent the kind of lighting that this environment would create for us. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, the very first thing I want to point out is that what we are looking at right now is not a good representation of what the lighting of this level looks like. It's just kind of a... An approximation. An approximation. There you go. It's an <laughs> I threw an extra Z in there. I like well, it. That's cool. Extra syllables are always great. But this is an approximation of that's the right. lighting that we should be getting. In order to really see our final lighting, we need to build our lighting. So I'm going to click on the Build Lighting button, and this is going to take just a second. First, we're going to get the, build, uh, the lighting build options. We don't really need to change anything in here. We're just going to click OK. And let me go ahead and warn you right now, this does take some time. Now, we have got a very simple level here with very few static meshes in it. And even in this particular setup, you're seeing here that it's taking more than just a few seconds. Absolutely. So it's ticking across, creating all of the various light and shadow maps and getting everything squared away. But it's not super fast. No. So if you happen to have a quad-core system, <laughs> that's a good thing. All and right. there you go. We're done. Uh, it gives us a little warning. says paths need to be rebuilt. Well, we have no paths in this level, so that's irrelevant. We can close that, and you'll notice things look a bit dimmer now. Yeah. And uh, we don't really have all that many shadows anymore. They've kind of been washed out. So before we really do anything with lights, I want to take a look at that aspect, that we really don't have any shadows. Even right over here, like right behind these columns, you'd think there should be some sort of darkening effect going on, and there's nothing. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is if we select any of our BSP surfaces and open up the uh, surface properties window, which is hiding down here in the underside of my interface, Currently, our light map resolution is set to 32, which means we have these great big puffy shadows. So big, in fact, that they kind of get washed out. Now, for our purposes, what I want to do is take our light map resolution and lower it, thereby sharpening up our shadows. We're going to push this all the way down to 4, and I don't just want to do it for this uh, particular surface. I want to do it for everybody, except the ceiling. I don't really think we need to do it to the ceiling. Nah. When you do this, when you uh, decrease your light map resolution to sharpen your shadows, you are in a effect, stretching out the amount of time building is going to take place. You're increasing the number of calculations. Uh, you're kind of making your map way more in turn, like with a more, uh, more emphasis on its calculation. So don't do it everywhere. I'm just doing it for a demonstration in this case. So let's right click here on this surface and we're going to go to select surfaces, adjacent walls, and then we'll hold down control and we'll select the floor here. And I'll just grab these two panels as well. So I'm not selecting the ceiling. I don't really see any uh, reason to increase the shadows there. We're going to set this to 4, and then we can close this. Now, I'm going to spare you the rebuild right now. But if we were to rebuild this, we would notice that the shadows behind all of our objects have sharpened up considerably. Okay, we're going to light one room at a time. I'm going to start off in here with our little fountain room. So let's begin by creating our very first light. And at first, we're not going to have a really clear picture of what our lighting looks like in this room because this work light is getting in the way. So what I'd like to do is double-click this light and grab its properties. We'll expand the light properties. We'll expand light component. And I'm going to check off Be Enabled, which just turns off the lights in this room. Yeah, actually, it looks pretty cool. It's very dark and kind of <laughs> spooky. And immediately, our lighting changes a little bit, and we're no longer looking at our true lighting anymore either. Uh, it's, it's broken our lighting system. You know, things got really brighter in here. If we wanted to see what this lighting looked like, we would, of course, need to rebuild. So we're not going to do that just yet. We're going to try lighting up this room first. So I'm going to create a new light. I'll hold down the L key and click here on the floor, and that'll create a new light. And I'm going to put this right in front of one of these little tiny light stands that we have here. So we'll zoom really close in. And you'll notice that icon is really huge and mm -hmm. kind of getting in our way. Let's fix that. We can actually change the draw scale for this icon. I'm going to set it down to about 0.4. Actually, even lower than that. Let's try 0.25. So just a little tiny light bulb. Make sure it's right in the center of this guy. And I'm going to keep him really close to the surface, too. Now, it's a perfectly white light. And that's not really what I'm going for. So we'll start by double-clicking on the light to open up its properties. Let's scroll down under its light component, and you'll find a uh, color swatch in here for light color. Click on the little magnifying glass. Notice the tooltip is a little bit of a misnomer. It says show generic browser, but if you click on it, you actually get a color picker. It's the generic color browser. That's, that sounds good to me. <laughs> I'm going to choose a, a shade of orange because this looks like an orange light that's coming out, but don't leave it super saturated. Push it out toward a very pale orange. 
And you'll notice that what you get is just a really warm looking light. Mm -hmm. Now also, uh, I want to bring the brightness down of this light. Currently its brightness value is set to 1, which is really bright for this much uh, of a little lamp. So let's set this maybe down to about 0.4. And that really dims things out. If it looks too dim, don't worry just yet, because we're going to put one of these on each of the four faces of this lamp. So for now, let it be a little bit dark. Uh, also, though, I'm going to pull down the fall-off exponent. Now, if you don't know how uh, light works in terms of exponents, the higher your exponent, the more that light is going to decay. And, uh, like, if you take a, a light bulb and you hold it up in a really big, dark room, at some point you're no longer uh, illuminating the back wall of the room. That light kind of fades off. Its energy kind of decays as you move away from it. So if we increase this fall-off exponent value, we increase that amount of decay. And if you look toward the back of the room, the higher it goes, the darker things get because that light is falling off a lot faster so if I set this as high as maybe 10 that back wall gets really really low I'm just gonna pull this down to 4 keep in mind once again what you're seeing in your viewport is an approximation approximation you did it again, did it again twice there, it's <laughs> hard to say that word <laughs> an approximation uh, of the lighting so once again to see what the real final look is you're gonna have to rebuild light that's right which we're not gonna do right at the moment let's go ahead and close this window and I like what this one lights doing but we need more so I'm gonna hold down the alt key and we'll drag out a copy and we get a second light I'm gonna put this right in front of this other face of the lamp like so and that's kind of starting to brighten things up considerably. I want to keep it really close to that surface, though. And the reason I'm doing that is that later on when we build lighting, it's going to uh, cast some shadows from this little roof shape up onto the ceiling. So the, the closer you leave those, the nicer that's going to look in this particular case. Let's hold down the Alt key, and I'll drag a copy right through the lamp to this other surface. And then we can hold down Alt if we wanted to and drag one over to this lamp, like so. And while we're on a roll, we could Alt-drag yet another one over here. Let's take this guy and we'll alt-drag him over here. So we've already got six lights. And you can see, even though we started off with one dim light, because we keep adding them together, we're getting some nice illumination coming mm -hmm. out of this. Also, though, you'll notice that you're getting some really funky shadows starting to appear. Don't worry about these just yet. These are dynamic shadows used to give you an idea of the kind of shadows you're going to get when you rebuild. But it's a different kind of shadow than what we'll have as our end result. And it's not really relevant to what we'll see when we build lighting. So don't really worry about it. You also notice they kind of pop out of existence if you get too far away. Again, don't stress about that. Let's hold down Control and grab these two lights here on the front. And I'll alt-drag those to the back of the lamp really carefully, make sure that their pivot points are outside the lamp. Otherwise, if they're inside, you're going to be just casting a whole bunch of shadows about the room. Okay, so those lamps are lit, so to speak. They really are uh, casting out illumination into the room. I wonder if maybe it's a little bit too much illumination. Like maybe if it's uh, lighting up this corner a little more than I originally wanted it to. Really hard to say until we rebuild. Until we, we rebuild. We could, of course, just go ahead and rebuild. Let's, and ju let's just rebuild for this one corner, right. and that will give us an idea of what we're going to be looking at. So I'll go ahead and click on Build Lighting, and we'll click OK. I think I have uh, Perform Full Quality Build unchecked in that window. That's just because I've been using Unreal a couple of times, and it was just unchecked the last time I used it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's making a significant difference here, but if you want to uncheck it on your end, go for it. Of course, once again, we will be waiting for just a minute as the calculations are completed. And the calculations are going to take more time now. That's our right. light and shadow map, especially our shadow maps, have a higher resolution because we brought down that uh, shadow value, and we have more lights to calculate. That's right. So ah, we're almost done. Still pretty quick, though. Yeah. All right. So let's close this and see what we've got. So we've got some kind of blotchy shadowing taking place over here. Generally, I'm okay with that. That's going to be taken care of when we light these lamps. But uh, if we look over here, we've got some nice shadowing taking place. So yeah, this, it's not that bad. This corner of the room is kind of dark. I almost wouldn't mind it being a little darker. Okay. But... I don't know. And it has a very rich feel. As I, th far I think as I'm we'll, I think we'll leave it for now, and then you know, later on, if you wanted to change something, uh, we could definitely do it from there. I will point this out though. If you want to control how far out your light travels, you saw me playing with uh, the fall off exponent a second ago. Another really good one to play with is your light's radius. If you scroll way down, there's a radius value which by default is set to 1024. You can visualize that if you pull far enough back away from a light. There's this gigantic sphere around it which shows you the area of effect for that light. Just as an example, if I was to pull this down to, say, 512, that really shrinks down the effect of the light. In fact, it pulls it down so far that the lights in this corner would no longer be even touching this corner. Right. So uh, I don't really want to do that. So we'll go ahead and pull that back out to 1024. Just, oh, but not 10,240. 
Yeah. Okay. So I think that's going to work for now. Let's, um, let's get this lighting over on our other set of lamps as well. And to do that, let me come over here to the top view. We'll go into wireframe mode, and I'm really carefully going to grab all four of these lights. Now, you'll notice they're not exactly lined up on those lamps. I'm not too worried about that. We could probably maybe take these guys and pull them out just a little bit or maybe push these in. So if you want to take just a moment and clean up light placement here in this nice orthographic view, that would be probably a good time to do that. But we'll grab all eight of these lights, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift, and we'll drag these right over to our other set of lights as well. So now those are automatically lit, and that was nice and easy. Okay, let's jump back over to Perspective, and we'll switch to Lit Mode. And now the room looks a whole lot brighter. But again, remember, this is just an approximation, or an approximation. Yeah, go ahead and hit Rebuild, and let's talk about that for a second. About approximation? That's right. So as that goes through here and rebuilds everything real quick, we'll talk about why I'm unable to say the word approximation. There you go. There you go. You but, got it. But don't worry. That's only going to happen once. If I have to say it again, I'm sure I'm going to throw three or four Zs in there. Probably. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. Now, actually, it was a good idea for Zach to go ahead and rebuild here because we've duplicated off so many lights that the approximation... <laughs> Approximation. Told you. The approximation that we have going on in the level right now is really blown out of perspective. That's right. We no longer have a good idea of what's taking place. So once this is rebuilt, it's going to look, well, much better a because better. it's going to be our actual lighting. So you'll notice, though, that we have increased our rebuild time because, well, we've added in a bunch more lights. And here we go. It's actually jamming a lot faster than we originally thought it was going to go. Mm-hmm. As the room gets silent. Yeah, it's, it's, just, don't worry, guys. Your video hasn't uh, cut off or anything. That's right. We're just staring. There, there we go. go. Nice. So we can close this out. And this is what the lighting is actually starting to look like. I think maybe that these, for just what these guys are, because, you know, that's what, a candle in a box. I think it's lighting that back wall just a little bit much. Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm going to do to fix that. Select them all at the same time. Well, sort of, but that's only part of the battle. We're going to come in here and select... All of these. So, yeah, we do want to select everybody. <laughs> That's about to hang say. on, hang on. That's, that's only part of the battle. Well, I didn't say what else you were going to do. I just said select I know, all of them. I know. All right. <laughs> now, before I even affect anything, though, it, this looks like the kind of selection that would come in really handy. It would mm -hmm. be very nice to be able to grab all of the lights that are around these little lamps at any given time. So I'm going to go back up into my browser window by clicking on the Open Generic Browser button at the top of the toolbar. And let's jump over to the Groups tab, or the, the Groups browser, and we're going to go under Edit and create a new group with the selection that we have. And we're going to call this, uh, let's say, Floor Lights. And check it out, if I click on the Floor Lights, which just appeared here in the left column, we get all of these lights. So it's a nice way to keep them all organized and uh, you know keep track of everything that we have, but there's something else kind of cool about it, too. And that is, once I uh, get done with these, once I'm happy with them, I can hit this little checkbox and make them disappear. They're still emitting light, but we don't see them anymore. The other really cool thing about this, though, is that with this group in place, if I select floor lights, I can go under edit, and I can choose select actors, and I can grab all of those at once. Which Very is, handy. Yeah, it's a lot better than having to go and click on them all at the same time. Right. All right, now let's uh, hit F4 to open up the properties window. Might have to nudge my viewport before it'll read, but there we are. And let's start by bringing down our radius. We saw that 512 was a little bit too far in. I mean, we could try how about, it. about 720? Me, no, instead of radius, how about let's just crank up the, uh, the, the fall off. off. Yeah. We can. It's, the only thing I'm concerned about, and I'll just, uh, is that radius kicks out so far beyond our back wall that we just really have to crank that to, to make it work. Uh, take the fall off up to even 8, and that's going to really, really start to bring it into a much tighter area. And it does. I like that multiple uh, shadow back there behind the dragon. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Cool. So you could take that even if you wanted to. You could even go up to 10, rebuild, and see how dark that's going to be off there in the back. All right, well, hang on. Let me, let me do the radius just once. Okay. We don't have to keep it. I just want to show them that... Uh, we just showed that, it a minute ago. All right, fine. <laughs> fine. But you can if you want to. Okay. You convinced me. All right, let's do 16. We'll just double that. Okay. And that's more like what I'm looking for. I want to see that back wall starting to fall more and more into shadow. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Now, again, the cool thing about that well, is... While, while you're explaining, let's go ahead and do a rebuild. So sure. we can explain while it's rebuilding, and then they'll be able to see the accurate lighting. Sure. The nice thing about having all those lights selected was that inside the properties window, I can affect them all at the same time, which is really nice for a setup like this, where you want a, a nice uniform set of properties between all of your lights. Without a doubt. 
And this is going to take a little bit. So. Oh, not too much time. Just give it a second. Probably about 40 seconds, and I'm sure we can come up with a thing or two to talk about. We will, of course, be adding in six more lights in this room, as we do have those lights hanging from the ceiling. So we'll be taking those into account. Actually, be a lot more than six. We're going to do something very similar to what we did here with these light boxes. Are you going to put them on each side yeah. of those? Oh, well, there you go. It's, I just kind of prefer it. You don't really have to. Uh, it's just something that I kind of like doing because you can control the lighting on each side of it. But Okay. And I don't know what else to say. So how about that weather today? The weather's pretty good. We, yes, could, we yes, could go back is. into your pronunciation of approximation. No, I think we've beat that one to death. Approximization? We yeah, start like adding that. more uh, well, syllables uh, to it? Generally just a bunch of Z's, that's all. And we're almost done. There we go. Okay. All right. So this is what our lighting actually, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. I want well, that back just... wall to be really, really dark, almost okay. like it's just eating up the light. Okay, so uh, let's see. Maybe I'll, I'll change my tactics just a little bit, okay. just, just for you guys to show you something different. We could put a light into each one of these meshes, mm -hmm. but there's certain uh, things we need to consider if we do that. Let's hold down the L key, and I'll click here on the wall, and it'll create a new light, which, of course, by default is going to be white in color, and that doesn't really work for and us. And gigantic. And gigantic. <laughs> but uh, these particular meshes aren't emitting, sh or are they, is it emitting shadows? It looks like, yeah, our light might have disappeared when it got inside there. So this guy could be cast. yeah, he is. You see the actual lamp mm -hmm. mesh is casting shadows? So if I put a light in here, we get no, uh, no light whatsoever. It's kind of like turning on a light bulb but putting it into a cardboard box. Right. Now you have some options here. You could put lights all the way around this mesh if you wanted to, just like we did uh, over here with these guys. Or as an option, we could open up the properties of this static mesh, expand static mesh actor, and scroll down to its lighting section, and we could turn off its ability to cast shadows. And now light goes right through it, which is kind of a, a nice little feature. Now with that, we can jump back over to our light, which is still a little big. but <laughs> it's Just a little, but I know it makes it easier to yeah, see and move around. It makes it easier for us to select it if we need to later, because it is now inside of a mesh. We're more interested in that pivot point. So uh, let's begin with uh, light color, and we'll make this... Uh, again, probably some shade of orange. Just as a, a, a point, though, we could close the color chooser, and we have this other little button for use mouse to pick color from viewport, and we could click here, say, on this orange section, and that'll give us an orange light. And you know what? Did you see what I just did? I changed the mod shadow color instead of the light color. You did. Oh, well, we'll just change that, too. We don't really need the mod shadow color. In fact, just on principle, I'll put that back on black. Okay. Okay, so now we have a nice orange light. I am going to change radius on this one. Okay. Just uh, on principle. So we'll pull this down to, I don't, I think 512 might work because it's halfway along the wall already. Mm -hmm. But make sure you pull back and get an idea of how far out that light's going. It's just barely making it to the opposite wall, which is fine for us because we have some other lights that are going to be put over here as well. So that'll, I think that'll work out well. I might kick up my fall-off exponent, though, because I'm a big fan of uh, bringing that down. I almost never leave it just at 2. Uh, let's try 4. Not even, no, it didn't even pick up. There we go. And there you go. It's really tightening up that light just to that one lamp. And I really like that. Now, real quick, before we do anything else with these lights, let's take all of these static meshes all at once. And make sure that none of them cast shadows. That's right. We'll press F4, scroll down, and grab that cast shadow property and turn that off. Now, with that done, I can grab this light, hold down Alt, and drag a copy over here into his next door neighbor. And then hold down Alt and drag another copy as well. Select all three of these lights. Let's go into the top view and go into brush wire frame mode. And we'll just drag these right across the room and put them inside the opposite lights. Now we'll go back into perspective, check out lit mode. And there we go. We probably would want to build this and see what it looks like. But already, even with the approximation, I'm really liking the general feel that we're getting. So uh, what I will do, though, before we do anything else, is we will... Select each one of these lights, so I have all six of these selected. Let's go back into our group browser, and we'll create a new group. And let's call this... Hanging lights. Hanging lights. I like it. There we go. So we have access to those should we ever need them all at once. And I think that's going to pretty much wrap up the lighting for this room. One more thing I would like to mention, though. You'll notice at the very beginning I disabled this, uh, this light. You could delete this light if you really, really wanted to, but I do want you to keep one very important thing in mind, and that is that Unreal Engine 3 doesn't calculate bouncing light. That's right. Now, if you go into your bedroom and you have just a single flashlight and you point it at the ceiling, 
you don't just see the ceiling light up. You know, the, the whole room in general is going to light up unless you have your ceiling painted with black felt or something. But uh, that's because that light is hitting all of your surfaces and it's bouncing around in a whole bunch of different directions, giving you sort of a, a global illumination or an ambient lighting effect. We can reuse this work light to give us a bit of an ambient light effect. And I'm going to go ahead and do that here, and if we don't like it, we always kill it later. But always, the general idea would be to keep an effect like this very soft. What I'm going to do is turn off shadows for this. Now, why am I doing that? That's because I don't want this ambient light to be stopped by anything. For example, like, you know, if you have... I'm, I'm trying to come up with a really good example. Maybe behind these pillars. You know, just because maybe no light is going right here behind this pillar, that doesn't mean light wouldn't hit this wall over here and bounce back there. Sure. So to simulate that bounced light, we need a light that's not really casting shadows. We'll leave its radius nice and big at 1024, but I'm going to take its brightness way, way down. Let's say about 0.1. So it's a very, very dim light by nature. Uh, we'll set its color to something a little bit warmer than it is. So I'll start with orange and just pull it slightly down toward the orange spectrum. Here's a little bit more. And this is going to be a light that's more felt than actually seen. Did, did I miss something? Did you re-enable it yet? No, probably not. Okay. probably why we're not seeing anything on the level just yet. Be enabled. There we go. So there you go. It's really, really soft. Again, mm -hmm. it's just here to add a little bit of a bounce light effect. And I think that's all we really need to do. I'm not even really worried about the uh, fall-off exponent for it, so we'll leave that at 2 just for now. And with this, we would be ready to rebuild our lighting. Well, since we've pretty much got the lighting in place in this room, let's go ahead and do that so we can see what the final feel is for the room itself. Okay, so we'll give this just a moment to go through the rebuilding process. And, of course, you guys know you can go in there, play with this all day long, start making adjustments to the fall-off exponents, to your radiuses, to your brightnesses. Try not to leave your colors all at white. That's a, another really bad habit that beginners get into. Always try to put some sort of color, even if it's slightly off-white, into yeah. your light's color. Is it radius or radii? Well, radii, I guess, if you want to get I never, I like You never hear anybody say that, like even <laughs> like when you're supposed to, it's any like, word that ends in U.S.? Like vertex, vertices, and oh, then you get those yeah. that say vertexes. vertexes. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just like nails in my ears. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're almost done yeah, with Yeah, this is almost done. Once this is complete, we'll take a look at what the room looks like. Then we'll move over to the next room and get the illumination in place over there. And things get kind of interesting over there because we have that string of lantern lights. That's right. And so here it comes. It's almost there. I can feel it. Can you now? No. All right, let's close that. And, and boom. there we go. So really soft ambient light, which is mostly just keeping our shadows from falling to true black. The fountain's still a little bit darker, which is what we were going for. And I'm real, I think I'm digging it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. It's a very warm feel to it. Now, uh, just as a, a tip, if you want to see what this looks like without all your lights in the way, you can hit the G key, and that's going to put you into game mode, which will hide all of your icons. Mm -hmm. Very, very handy, but remember to turn it off when you're done, otherwise you won't be able to see anything that you're working on. And if you want that little red plus gone from the screen when you do that, just select, deselect yeah, it. Make sure there's nothing selected, and yeah. then there you go. There this, you go. This is exactly what this level will look like when played in game. Also, this is just as an added... Uh, Something to mention in case it scares anybody. When you go into game mode, it'll also add a bit of motion blur to the camera when you're moving around. Now, sometimes that motion blur will get stuck on your screen, and it'll look like everything is blurred like you need glasses. Turn on real-time preview, which is up here in the corner of your viewport menu bar, and that'll go away. And in this case, it also means that our lamps are going to flicker a little bit. But we're going to turn that off for now, and at this point, we're ready to light the other side of the room. All right, let's do it. So I'm going to start off by getting out of game mode. Which and is hitting which key again? The G key, once That's again. Right. Let's go back into our generic browser and jump over to the Groups browser. I'll select the Floor Lights, go to Edit, and choose Select Actors. Let's close this browser for just See a See how convenient that is, guys? And we'll go over to the top viewport, we'll jump into Brush Wire Frame View, and I'll zoom in on any one of these uh, two groups. We'll hold down Alt and Shift, and I'll drag over in the Y axis and position these guys right around our other set of lights. And that's going to... Just a little bit to the left. A little bit to the left. Like so? Yep, right there. There's the tiniest little nudge. All right, so with that, actually, that lit most of our room, which is cool <laughs> for us. So let's go back over to perspective, go back over to lit mode, and here we are. So that took care of a lot of that lighting. The next thing I want to do is take our little work light, and for now, let's just completely disable it. Okay. Now, we still got some light spilling over from this end of the room. Sure. 
you could turn off lights in here if you wanted to. Uh, now, if you're trying to be selective, I have more than once uh, when I'm doing this kind of thing, just put up a sheet or something to break off the light coming over. But we're not going to worry about it in this particular case. It, it's already still pretty dark over here. We know that this end of the room is going to work just fine. What we need to do is worry about what's going on back here in the background. So we'll start off by holding down the L key, and I'll click right underneath this uh, orange sphere, which creates a little light that's kind of stuck in the wall. So we'll pull that out a little bit. And before we do anything with it, let's go ahead and take a look at its properties. So for starters, uh, fall off exponent of 2, we'll probably end up changing that. I'm going to begin with a radius. We're going to pull our radius down to 512, so it's going to have a really low radius. This is a fairly dim light. Uh, we'll probably be tweaking brightness too, but let's get color first. So this is a really yellow orange. I guess we could go ahead and try pulling it from the viewport and see what we get. So let's pick on maybe this guy. That's a little too orange. So now we can jump back in here and we can tweak the color a little further, maybe push it up toward white. I think that'll work. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to uh, push off my fall-off exponent a bit to get a lot more decay in there, maybe as high as 6, okay. which you know gives it that nice soft feel to it. I'm also going to select the static mesh, which grabs all these lamps. Make sure that this mesh is not casting shadows, because what we're going to do is put this light actually inside the mesh. And really, you know, if this were a real thing, the only thing that would be casting shadows would be maybe the string. You would probably get a little circle of light coming out of the bottom. Which, I mean, if you were really determined, you could create a spotlight that just shined out of the bottom of that. But we're going to keep things fairly simple in sure. this case. So there is a single yellow light, and that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and hold down the Alt key, and we'll drag out a copy of this light and we'll slide it down into this other yellow lamp, like so. That looks pretty good. And we'll hold down Alt one more time, just get around the work light. And we'll drag this right underneath our final yellow lamp, and then just slide it up into place, like so. Okay, looking good. And we're going to pull you out of the way for just a second. Okay, so now we need to bring in some lights for these red lamps and the, uh, the blue lamps. We can just reuse this guy. So let's hold down Alt, and we'll drag over and pull this down inside of our red lantern. And I'll press F4 to open up our properties. And the first thing we're going to jump for is our color. So we'll just slide this over to a shade of red. I'm not even going to worry about the saturation at first. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. And we can see that did get a lot warmer. We could maybe push a little more saturation. I think that works. Okay. So let's close out of here and let's copy this over as well. So we'll hold down Alt and slide this over in X. There we go. Now we need to bring in the blue lanterns. Keep in mind that the human eye doesn't see blue as well as it sees red, so we'll probably need to kick up the intensity of the blues just a little bit if we want them to show up. So we'll push this down into the lantern. Let's come straight down to our color. And, uh, yeah, you can you know, already see here, if we click OK, I mean, it's got a little bit of blue. Maybe just a little bit more, though. So that's kind of vivid. And then we'll hold down Alt and make a copy of this that we'll put back here into our other lantern. So we're really getting this multicolored effect. And that's generally it. The last thing we can do is maybe take this uh, work light that we have and, again, turn this into a bounce light as well. So let's put it a little more toward the center of the room. We'll open up its properties. We'll re-enable it. It's really bright, too. Uh, let's pull its brightness down to 0.1 like we did the last one. In general, I think our lighting is going to be fairly, uh, very warm as opposed to cold, so we'll apply a, just a little bit of an orangish tinge to it, and then we will make sure that we switch off the ability to cast shadows so right. we get some, uh, some lights over in our shadowed areas. And I think with that, we're ready to rebuild and call this a wrap. All right, let's go ahead and rebuild one. Barring any tweaking, because you never sure. know. I mean, when you get done with a, a lighting situation that you think is done, always build and walk through it, and then you'll know for sure. Now, our beginners may be questioning your placement of lights back there with the lantern lights where you weren't actually going into, say, an orthographic view and lighting things up. Really a problem? I don't think so. No, nah, it uh, really comes down to look. Well, in, in this case, you know, the lights are coming from such a... It's going to feel like a soft source. Yeah, it's very diffused because yeah. it's going through the material that's on each of those lanterns. So, I mean, if uh, if it really felt like it was off, you'd want to go in there and tweak sure. it, but I think in this case if you were, even if you had the, lan uh, the light outside the sphere of that lantern, I don't think anybody would really be able to tell. Right. I just wanted to bring that to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Attention. Absolutely.
Precision is all in the eye of the beholder, or actually not really, but that sounded cool for just but a second. once this is done, if no tweaking is required, that's all we're really going to do with this level. Yeah, and the level will be done. The last thing we could do is probably add a player start and then run around and have a look at it. Okay. We can also save it out in such a way that we can uh, play it as an Unreal map. And Oh, we're almost done. So the static lighting is done. And here it comes. Coding light maps, and this will take probably about another 10 seconds. We need, like, five more cores. It'll be a <laughs> seven-core machine. There we go. All right, so let's close. There we go. Oh, so Yeah, very nice. Kind of dim in here, but I kind of like, like that. that. Yeah, no, I like that. It really brings out those lights. So let's hit G and go into game mode. I'll select the floor just to make that little red cross go away. I think it's working. So let's get out of game mode. The last thing I'm going to do is add a player start. Where would you like to start? Maybe ah, in this you room? pick a place. All right, let's go right here in the middle of the floor. We can just right-click, and from the right-click menu, choose Add Actor, and you'll see a player start buried in here. So click on that, and there we go. And with that, I think we'd be ready to play. The last thing we can do is save the map out. So let's just go to File, Save As, and uh, I'm, this is currently, in our case, called Getting Started. What I'm going to do is set this to Getting Started 3, so I've got an incremental save, but I'm going to add the prefix DM hyphen, which is short for deathmatch, and that will allow this uh, game to be played through actual Unreal Tournament. We'll end up with a weapon and, and all that sort of thing. So with that, let's, uh, I don't have access to my play in editor button, which is up here in the toolbar, so I'm still going to have to click the floor and say play from here. And boom, there we go. So now we have a gun, we can run around and have a look at all of our lighting. Yeah, it's very nice looking. We can shoot things. <laughs> <laughs> And that's really it for creating this basic level. Ooh, I really like how the shadows are falling back there. Yeah, that looks nice. And that's going to about wrap it up. So we can go ahead and get out of our little play in editor. I'll go into game mode just because it looks so nice. And yeah. I think we're wrapped. Once again, guys, just remember the objective of these videos were, were to take you through the creation of a very simple unreal level mm -hmm. that's all very simple we are going to focus on the creation of a much more involved much more complex level near the end of these videos that are being included here with unreal tournament absolutely so that's going to wrap up this basic level thanks a lot